If you've never used Deep Sky Stacker, today I'm going to show you how to use it in 10 simple steps. Hi, I'm Daniel Zalero and today I'm going to help you get started with astrophotography stacking. Deep Sky Stacker is a free program that you can use to stack your astrophotography images. And if you're just getting started in this hobby, it's a great place for you to start. Now in this video, I'm not going to be going over all of the various details and settings that you can use. I'm going to keep this really simple and really basic so that you can get started. So step number one, we need to download the program. Go to your internet browser and type in Deep Sky Stacker. And the first option that pops up is the one we're going to click here. And then over on the left, we're going to click the download button and then click this where it says Deep Sky Stacker 4.2.5. And then down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the options to download the 32-bit or the 64-bit programs depending on your computer. I'm not going to download it because I've already got it. But once you get it downloaded, you're going to launch the software. So step number two, we need to make sure that we've got the right settings selected for our camera file types. Over here in the bottom, where it says options and settings, it says raw fits DDP settings. Select that. If you're using a DSLR with raw files, my suggestion is that you leave all these boxes here unchecked. These three, these two appear in this one down here, and it's already got bilinear interpolation selected, all right? If you're using a dedicated astronomy camera, if it's monochrome, you just want to leave that unchecked. But if it's a one-shot color camera with a, a color matrix, Bayer matrix, you're going to want to select that box. All right. Now we've got the right settings selected. The third thing, the third step is to open our frames. Open picture files up here on the left. You're going to find wherever you've stored your, your files. I'm using my Hydrogen Alpha data from my Wide Field Orion shot. And we're going to open those. You'll notice it says zero light frames uh, selected, so you can hit check all and it'll make sure they're all selected. Then if you're using calibration frames, you can open those as well. If not, um, then don't worry about it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and open them just to show you how that works. So there's my dark files. I'm going to click flat files. My flat files are four seconds long for each exposure on this data set. And then dark flat or bias, depending on what you use. All right, so once we've opened all of our frames, you'll see right here in this blue bar, it shows you how many of each that you've got open. So the fourth thing, step number four, we want to adjust the window, the view. Right now, you're not seeing anything. Uh, if you select your first light frame, your image will pop up. Now, typically, it's not going to look like this. What it's going to look like is this, and you're not going to see anything. Um, so you're going to want to pull these, this middle slider and the black slider towards each other a little at a time until you can start to see your image. Because what we're going to do is important for the next step. Itch, which is step number five, let's go through and delete bad frames. You can zoom in with your mouse and you can look at your stars individually. So what you want to check for is stars that look really bad and bloated compared to the other frames or have star trailing. Things like a gust of wind or bumping the mount um, can mess up your stars. You can also get uh, satellite trails or plane trails or clouds moving through. You know, just want to look through and you can click through each frame here and look at each individual one of them and try to find the ones that, if you've got any, that just look really bad. If you find one you want to delete, you can do one of two things. You can either um, check the box off where it's just basically not going to use it in that data set. Or if you want to completely delete it altogether from your computer, you can right click and click erase from disk. All right, so step number six. Now we need to register our frames. Over here on the left, click register checked pictures. And we're gonna see these options that are uh, popped up over here. So under advanced, it's gonna show compute the number of detected stars. Basically, we, we wanna have stars um, show up enough that it can use those for aligning our, our frames together. So I've got about 15% selected. So let's see what happens when I hit compute. 
So it's showing that it detected 69 stars. Like I said, I kind of like 50, between 50 to 100. So that's a good amount. Now if we go all the way to the right here, let's see what happens. It only shows seven stars. That's not enough to, to align your pictures right. If we go all the way to the left here, let's see what happens. Now we've got almost a thousand stars and, and that could be correct but it's not needed. But more likely what's happening is it's actually detecting noise in your frames of stars, which is bad and we don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go back to my 15%. Um, that's the right amount that we want, okay? Then what we're gonna do, um, I suggest starting off with keeping this selected, automatic detection of hot pixels. Um, most of the time it works. There may be some issues with that, but like I said, I'm not gonna go into too many details about um, all these different options. But we're gonna click, okay, but um, let me clarify this. You don't wanna select stack after registering right now. So we've got these options selected, we hit okay, and it's gonna begin registering all of our frames. It's gonna take our dark frames, our flat frames, our dark flats, and it's gonna create a master file by uh, averaging those together. And then it's going to go through each of our light frames and find how many stars are in each frame. And it, and it does kind of give you a little bit of a rating system that we'll look into. So we'll be back in just a second when this is done. Okay, so step number seven, we're gonna wanna look at the details of our stacked or our registered images here. So you can scroll down and look at the light frames and it gives it a score. Now I want to say this, Deep Sky Stacker, sometimes that score is not always accurate, it's not always dependable, but you can kind of get an idea of some things that look um, off. So for mine, if you look at the average, and if, I, if you click any of these um, um, boxes up here, you can actually change how it sorts it. So if I click this, um, what it'll do is it'll show my top score of 586 and my bottom score of 469. Uh, really, based on that, all of my frames are on average about the same. They look pretty good, but you know, if you've got some that say score a thousand, and they average from a thousand to say, you know, six seven hundred, and then at the bottom you see a few that have two and three hundred, there's probably something wrong with those frames. And what you could do is you can click on it and take a look and say, okay, why did that get scored so low? Is that something I really want to use for this stacking here? And then you can also see, um, it'll show you the filter that you used. It'll show you your date and time, it'll show you the size of your sensor here, the type of file that it is, the, the gain that you use, the exposure. It'll give you your uh, full width half max of your stars, the amount of stars that it detected. So you can use these settings to get an idea of how your frames are looking. Step number eight, we need to select the frames that we're going to be using for stacking. Now. With this situation, if you look and you see that all of your light frames look good, you've deleted all the bad ones, the rest of them are great, then you can just select all of them. Uh, but if you've got a few that you wanna leave out, then you can uncheck those boxes. For, for now, I'm selecting all of them. I'm gonna select all of my light frames, all my dark frames, flat frames, and dark flats. And step number nine then is we go over to this option to stack checked pictures. And we need to look at our settings. The easiest thing, if you're a beginner, is to go over here to this recommended settings option, and you're just gonna do what Deep Sky Stacker recommends. For the most part, the recommended settings that Deep Sky Stacker wants you to use will work. Um, there's a few cases where things might not work out as well as they could, or a few situations where if you know what you're doing and you know how to adjust some of these settings, then you can kind of change things up. But if, if you're new to this, going with the recommended settings will work pretty good most of the time. So it says I'm using 25 light frames to use one of these two. Um, I like to use the Sigma clipping combination when I'm using this many frames. It says you're creating a master dark from 30 frames. Use Sigma clipping median. So if I select that there, then it actually changes the setting for me. And then also the same for the master flat. If I select it, it changes it. Now one setting we might want to take a look at, um, we're going to click over here at stacking parameters and go over to this last tab called output. You can change um, 
you know, how your file is saved. If you want it to have a specific name, um, you can change where it is saved to, change the actual folder that it is saved to. So that might be something that you want to adjust. So once we've got all of our settings selected the way that we want them, step number 10 is to hit this OK button and let Deep Sky Stacker start stacking our frames together. Depending on how fast your computer is, this could take a little while or it could take a long while, but you just sit back and wait. So here you can see the final output image. And if you've never used Deep Sky Stacker before, then you might be a little disappointed because you're thinking, what in the world is this? This doesn't show anything. That's because this is still a raw file. It's just a stacked raw file. You still need to take this file into something like Photoshop or PixInside or there's a variety of other programs you can use and then stretch the data. But all the data that you have from your object that you photographed is in that file. You just got to bring it out. Now, if you found this video helpful, then do me a favor and hit that like button. And until next time, clear skies, my fellow astrophotographers.